Just look at it. Oh my God. We didn't stage any of this stuff. The cylinder heads, the differential, ring and pinion, like we didn't put anything in here. This place is stuffed with speed parts. Look, there's a front runner slotted mags right there. There's some centerline combo pros right here. Look at this. There's a camshaft. Look at that hood, dude. So the hood's fiberglass, but the rest of the car, I'm pretty sure is steel. And because it's on flat tires, and it's surrounded by just dead rat poop everywhere. I didn't crawl under it. I have no idea if it's rusty, but I don't think it is. But it's caged, it's got a power glide, it's got a big block Chevy with a Dominator on it. And like I said, it's not been registered since 2000. It hasn't made a pass or been out of this barn really in like 15 years. Yeah, it's a big tire car. She yeah. got some meat under her. Oh, dude. I've never had a pro street car. I've never had a car with big tires on it like this, dude. This is awesome. I think the first thing we do is try to air up the tires and try to push it into daylight, dude. Love it. We're gonna take my neighbor's uh, air compressor in there, try not to get bitten, stung, or what else? corona It's worth it. We're gonna air up the tires and then we're gonna try to shove this thing outside and then we'll pull the hood off and show you guys what's under the hood. Now it's just the studs. It's got a nitrous plate on it. Yeah, it does. It's <laughs> Dude, it's got two stages. Oh no, that's nitrous and fuel. No, that's a dual stage. <laughs> it's got a nitrous plate. You got washers, so yeah, be careful. And the electrodes are still on the plug, so that's good news. Even blowing them off with nitrous. It's got some good stuff, man. I like it. Okay, so this is a 9375 annular poly dominator. It's probably 30 years old by the looks of it, but since they put racing fuel in it, it's relatively clean. And we're gonna spray it out and cross our fingers. <laughs> And put it back on there and see it run. So I'm sure it'll be good enough for who it's for. Dude, look at that. Just pulled the valve covers off. Everything looks good. We got borescope that Bluetooths to your phone, and it's got an LED built into it. There's the spark plug hole. Turn down the spark plug hole. I see a piston. That's good news. Yeah, it's got it's got a piston. <laughs> It's got valve release in it, so I think these are out. Let's pull the filter and prime this thing. All right, I brought my priming tool, so I'm gonna pull out this distributor that was turned into a priming tool. And to do that, we're gonna use this tool. Looks like the bottom half of the distributor and uh, drops through the intake manifold. And you drop it on the ground. And then when you pick it up, you put that end in the oil pump drive rod, this end in your power drill. Spin it quickly and get oil to everything. Bearings, lifters, all the rotating surfaces. better that is. Look at that. Dude, the wheels are cleaning up nice. That looks so good now. Oh my gosh. I think we can go make passes in this thing. We just need to fix some of the things that make it completely unsafe. Like, it needs tires, right? All the tires are dry rotted. I managed to find another pair of 15 by 15 Centerline Convo Pros. They don't make them anymore but I found him on Facebook Marketplace, on the internet, in Tony Angelo's hood. He went and picked them up from a motorcycle shop. They're the right bolt pattern, they're the right backspacing. Tony ratchet strapped the slicks and let the air out of them to squeeze them down, <laughs> stuffed them in boxes and shipped them here. So we'll have a spare pair of wheels with slicks that might work for the track. I ordered a new set of uh, street tires for the back. So we'll, we'll do the tires, we'll replace the belts because they're all dry rotted. We'll do the radiator because it's leaking from the core. Our plug wires, obviously, they were shot when we put them on there. They're all cracked and everything. We'll take out the HA distributor and put in a um, MSD distributor because it'll plug right into the ignition box that's already in the car. And then this is the big thing today because it's really low. So we redo the front suspension and then it still has drum brakes up front, dude, which are really heavy and these particular ones don't actually work that well. So. We'll do the springs, we'll do the brakes, and put coilovers up front. It's not a bad list. We can knock this out today. Yeah, 
Yeah, so our front suspension upgrades are almost complete. Uh, we did our QA1 coilover conversions on the front of this car because one, these springs, which may look really tall, do not support the weight of this car. And I'm thinking the diameter is too small. These are probably small block springs. And the shocks, well, they're probably 30 years old or more. Uh, so why not just replace all in one? So our QA1s are a coilover and shock in one, and they're adjustable, which we can adjust ride height. Uh, we can, if we want to drag race, you turn them all the way soft, let the front of the car raise up when you take off. And um, plus we're putting disc brakes on it. So getting rid of the drum. Brake system is almost done. Newburn has killed it on changing the parts. Well, I've been out having eight different wheels and tires mounted on our centerline combo pros, and now we're down to replacing the master cylinder. When we pulled this out of the barn, we put this on the car just to get it running and take Granny out and do burnouts. Now that we want to go race the thing down a track, we're changing the front drums to disc brakes. We're keeping the back drums. That's pretty normal. We're gonna use this new master cylinder, which has larger pots built into it. This will provide enough fluid volume for our front brake calipers and our rear brake wheel cylinders. And then we have a new proportioning valve that is meant for a combination front disc rear drum brake system and a new brake push rod, which is meant for this master cylinder and the pedal of our first gen Firebird. I feel good about this. First burnout with round tires. All right, it did a burnout. It's done that before, but this time it didn't wheel hop, so that's good news. That was all right. It's a little in the weak department, but there we go. We are staged. This 1967 Pontiac Firebird spent nearly two decades in a barn before we rescued it, went to a drag strip, and failed. Since then, it's been back in the garage, and we've done a bunch of work to it. We put a new Holly Dominator carb new plugs, new wires, the radiator we had to replace because the bottom nipple was completely rotted off. We'd love to have a little more drivability out of this thing for going cross country. So we have a Gearstar Level 4 Turbo 400, which is a badass bomb-proof transmission with a trans brake. It also has a gear vendor's overdrive, underdrive unit bolts for the back of it. My buddy Matt Nab came in, re-geared the rear end with a bunch of parts from Quick Performance and now has four tens. That will make this thing cruise at 75 miles an hour down the highway at like 3,000 RPM. We're gonna pull the hood off, pull the plugs out, try to figure out why it's running so poorly, and then drive, because we've got about 800 miles to go in the next three days. Right, I'll get tools. We need to either look at the power valve or the jetting, because something's very unhappy. What this is designed for is when you go wide open throttle, and the vacuum disappears, that opens and allows extra fuel to go in there in addition to what's coming through these main jets. If you don't have enough vacuum when you're cruising around to hold that shut, it's open and it's always leaking and then your motor runs really rich in floods, which is kind of what's happening to our deal. So either that's not working or we have too large a main jets in here. We'll find out here pretty soon. See the two holes? That's where the additional fuel is coming through when you mat the gas. So we're gonna change this one out for one that requires less vacuum to stay shut and seal off those holes. So not only did we change the power valve, but we're gonna go from an 88 to an 84 main jet and cross our fingers that when we put the car back together, it doesn't run at nine to one. I don't wanna jinx us, but it already sounds happier engine is not quite happy with the new carburetor. We left the church, car ran better, but not great. So we pulled over real quick. 88 and 84 jets on the primary side of this Dominator seems way too big for this engine. So we dropped it all the way down to 70s. And then we got the power valve block off plate out of 
the old carb and put it in the new carb, yeah. and I think we're going to be much happier. I think, I think that alone is going to fix our issue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I feel good about this. Fat when you get on it. You gotta play with it a little more, but I think we can at least cruise and make miles. Cool. <laughs> it's stalled from our stellar tune-up, and then it doesn't want to crank. And I know the battery's not dead, it's just the starter is hot and the battery's in the trunk. If this works, it will blow my mind. We don't leave any man behind. Unless there's food or beer, I, you know, I might leave you. Yeah. Yeah, we found the books. That's all that happened. So we'll take some more jet out of it. It's a beautiful day here in Georgia to drive eight miles. That's how far we've gone. They just started misfiring. We pulled over and pulled the spark plugs out. This is from 864 cylinders. Those look okay. That one, I was not expecting, nor was I expecting another one on that side. And these are dead holes. These aren't firing anymore. We need to figure out why that's happening and can we fix it? And if we can't fix it, well, there's a motor and a trailer over there. We may be swapping it in a parking lot somewhere. This sexy thing here is 540 cubic inches of big block Chevy power. This is the engine that was in Newburn's attempted murder Nova that did drag week and didn't quite make it. So this is all aftermarket parts. There's no factory Chevy stuff here. You've got a Dart Big M cast iron block. You have Dart Pro One aluminum heads. We're gonna put the carburetor we have on it, the headers we have on it, all the accessories. And this combo, any day of the week, if it has about nine and a half or 10 to one compression, this should make 700, 750 horsepower all day long. I don't know what Freiburger's got in the Crusher Camaro right now. He changes engines as often as I change my underwear and all the respect to him in the world if he switched to engines at the last minute and shows up in Texas with the Crusher doing monster wheelies, that would be awesome. Hopefully we do wheelies and we can hang with the Crusher. You're not gonna believe this, but we're actually back in my garage again. We had to have the Firebird towed here because, well, there's no oil pressure in our newly rebuilt engine. The people at the campground were like impressed that this show is not put on. They're like, man, you guys are legit. This stuff actually happens. So they, they're all big fans now, except for the park ranger. Yeah, the campers um, loved us. Yeah. The ranger, not so much. No. So right now we're gonna try to generate some oil pressure here and I don't know, let's try it. Hey, immediately. What? You get oil pressure. Oh, it's immediate, and it's good. So some of these aftermarket blocks are machined, the bore in there, larger. And so the distributor comes with the O-rings to seal it to the bore. Otherwise, you won't have oil pressure, and it won't lube all the lifters. There's no O-rings on that distributor. So in theory, if we find O-rings to put on the distributor, we could put it in there, fire it up, and have oil pressure, but how much did we damage it already? Well, we can run it and cut the filter open. Yup. Hopefully, when I pull this off, there's some oil up here. Let's see. Oil? Not a drop. Mm. Not a drop. I got two here. We might have to bump the motor and move the lifters. I got four. All here. right, I got three here. Got another one. Okay, hold it there. Let's bump the starter and get the lifters to move, and that'll lower the last four. I guarantee that the distributor, even though it clunked down there in the gear, it's not locked into the drive. I got two more lifts over here. All right, I got six, seven. Baby, one more. Eight. Here we go. This is the big moment. We've figured out our oil pressure problem. I screwed up the distributor install. We now are confident we're gonna have oil pressure. We have changed it. The question now is, does the motor still squeak? Because we already damaged it. I hope not. Got oil pressure?
head opened up. I can't see nothing. Dude, that was close. Who won? Close race. Oh, I just lost. The car didn't want to pull, and the hood opened up. I had a little electrical problem, and my tack failed, and all my gauges. Same problem that I had when we raced at Famoso. Well, at least the car went straight, and I didn't die. That's good news. Cash me up, bro. All right. <laughs> Let's head to the bank. <laughs> Hubert has got to cash me up, because it was my boy at the end of the track taking the win. All right, to make it official, here's just what went down. The Crusher went 11.069, and the Rubber Duck, 11.10. So super, super close, even though he lifted. I had fun. Are we going to go again? Well, damn right we're going. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely going to have to take the hood off the car, because at 80 miles an hour, it's just like, nope, bye-bye, I want to open up, because there's no hood hinges holding the back of it down. All right, that was a pretty nice burnout. Fitting in. All right, Finnegan again, add some speed on that tire. All right, here we go. What do you think is going to happen here in Newburn? The fiber, it doesn't sound too good right now. I don't know. I think something's wrong, like a burnt plug wire or something. They're free stage, David stage, this is it. I think he might have been quicker than me that time, but I got out of the hole first. All right, I left dead late again, but the car ran better. I got chills. Yeah. It did a freaking wheelie. Oh, you bet you it did. Here, congratulations. Are we even now? Yeah. OK, cool.